today on Straight Talk Africa, innovators and entrepreneurs are transforming the continent, bringing economic growth, progress and opportunity to the people of Africa. That's coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa. It's Wednesday, February 18th. I am Shaka Sali. And hello, Shaka. And hello to all our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere. I'm Mariama Diallo, your social, media, your social media reporter. Today, we'll take a closer look at startups and accelerators that are popping up across Africa and the diaspora and how they attract technology experts and major corporations. And coming up later in our STA inbox, we'll hear from our audience who contributed to today's topic through emails, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll reveal some of them ahead on Straight Talk Africa. But first, the Kenyan tech scene is one of Africa's most advanced with soaring phone usage and cheap data spurring growth. But tech entrepreneurs say investment capital is scarce. And the investors drawn to Africa's Silicon Savannah say there is a shortage of innovation to meet needs. My colleague Vincent Macaulay has more. We live in a push Burton world. More and more that applies to how we learn too. An app called Eneza is helping these children in Nairobi. In Swahili, the word means spread. We normally pick on a subject. After that, we pick on the challenging questions, then we work them on the board together with the pupils. The app helps teachers like Julian Ocheng give many pupils, especially the poor ones, something they might only hope for, free and limited access to learning materials. All you do is dial a simple chord. They direct you and tell you the right answer and tell you more about the question. Like the app's users, Kenya's tech startup scene is youthful, eager, but lacking resources. Eneza is an exception. It got funded by Kenya's biggest mobile operator, Safaricom, and others. Money they couldn't do without, says Eneza developer Christopher Asego. When you're starting a business, you want it to, like, sort of fund itself. So, I mean, the initial funding that we got well, to, brought us this far. We have close to 350,000 students on the platform. Safaricom itself is proof that innovation can work. It's a pioneer of m -Pesa mobile money transfer technology, now used across Africa, Asia, and Europe, and generated $300 million in the last financial year. But success is elusive for would-be entrepreneurs. Even as they brainstorm in a local tech hub, a new report says many startups simply don't start. Over two-thirds of them not earning enough to keep a small team going. I have administrator Mogethi Kitao. It comes from, first of all, maybe identifying the right gap in, into the market um, and creating the right solution um, to, you mean, I mean, to address that gap, um, to getting the necessary support. The lack of investment and right ideas to monetize may be the two big problems, but investors should look through them, says Mogethi. Invest your money, invest your mentorship, and I would like to encourage young people to keep innovating. After all, says its fans, with mobile phone use at nearly 80% in Kenya, cheap data and soaring smartphone uptake, Kenya has all the right buttons to push. Thanks, Vincent, for that report. Uh, now joining us here in our Washington studios are two distinguished guests. Shinedu Enekwe, co-founder and executive director of Tip Hub Africa, a business accelerator and consultancy that supports seed stage tech and social impact ventures in Africa and the African diaspora. Thank you. Samuel Sulafel, founder and executive director of Mansa Collabs, an advisory group for scalable startups, expanding private companies and established social enterprises across the African continent and the diaspora. I have to say, well, uh, gentlemen, that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host the two of you for the first time on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you. Thank you it's very much. It's a pleasure to be here. You're most welcome. Later in the program, we'll give you, the audience, a chance to call and talk with our guests. The number to call is 202-619-3111. Just country code 
is one. Before we begin our discussion, I recently had the honor and privilege to sit down with Professor Sandy Stevens to Kodli Tegboa in our VOA studios here in Washington. We discussed the hybrid electric vehicle, the Chira EV Smack concept automobile that was originally developed by students from Makere University in Uganda. I asked the professor what brought him to the United States this time around. It's a part of uh, what we're doing with the project. That's the Kira uh, electric vehicle project, which is now, I feel like, uh, transiting into the establishment of what we shall consider as the first original automotive equipment manufacturing uh, undertaking mm -hmm. in East Africa. Really? How does this particular project differ from the Kenyan project that came up with what is considered to be the pioneering project really in the region called Nyayo in 1986. In our case, this project started as part of a collaboration with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. MIT. MIT. Mm -hmm. That's way back in uh, 2007. At that time, the young people in MIT, the young students, had set up a project that would uh, use the knowledge, the technology that was necessary to send Americans to the space mm -hmm. to use that technology to address earthly problems. Mm -hmm. And their first target was transportation. And uh, they assembled a team and they said this would be also an opportunity to get the young thinkers of the world mm -hmm. to come together mm -hmm. and they provide solution to the earth's problems, especially at a time when there was climate change issue. So, from Africa, Makere University at that time mm. was invited to participate. That's how you came into it? Yes. You mean you never had any prior dreams? Not to make cars. Originally, I had wanted to become a medical doctor because my mom died when I was three years old, and uh, I didn't quite understand why she died. So my ambition all along was to become a medical doctor so as to understand mm. yeah, what it was. Mm. But then when I went to Nyakasura, an incident occurred. Uh, one prep time at night, these naughty colleagues of mine went actually cut the insulation out of the wiring that was in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And they called on me, come and, come and touch this. Okay. I touched this bare wire, mm -hmm. not knowing. You know, I came from a place where there was no electricity. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this was my first encounter with electricity. And on touching this, I got thrown mm -hmm. down. For the next one or two minutes, I didn't know what was happening. Eventually, when I woke up, I asked the kids, what was it that threw me off? They all laughed. Mm -hmm. uh, no mm -hmm. one explained. I took up the matter with the teacher the following morning, and that's when the teacher said, you know, there's something called electricity you know, that threw you <laughs> off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so from that point, I threw away the idea of becoming a medical doctor. Okay. I said, let me now go and find out. And essentially, that's how I became an electrical engineer. Okay. So when these young people were contacted to participate in the MIT mm. project, mm. it was just opportune that I was an electrical engineer and, uh, you know, uh, the head it taught. Mm -hmm. And uh, the car mm. they were going to make or work on mm. was an electric car. How much of that is really Ugandan, authentically Ugandan? The times of Ford mm -hmm. were different. After the participation with MIT mm. in that project, <laughs> we were involved in building a vehicle known as Vision 200. That was in 2008 mm. in Torino. And I led part of that team to participate in building that Vision 200, okay, which is with MIT right now. And indeed, on my return, mm. I instructed my assistant, who unfortunately is not here, to assemble teams to design Uganda's electric car. Mm. So he assembled the three teams, electrical, communication, designs, you know, the various aspects of, of a car. And uh, within about a year, okay, we had all the designs on paper. 
we had slides to show, mm -hmm. you know, what we'd come up with. Fortunately, I think someone no, in, uh, news go to the president that there's this professor who is doing funny, funny things at the university. Mm -hmm. He is leading a couple of groups mm -hmm. with interesting ideas. Mm -hmm. So, as later we said, the president invited him to <laughs> himself to come and see what this professor was doing with his uh, young people. Indeed, when he came, we took him through the schemes that we were involved in. He said, I did not know that these are the kind of things that are happening in Makere. I have known Makere for some other th reasons, mm. but not these kind of useful things. So I'm going to invite you with your children mm. to come to visit us in State House mm. and please make your presentations, uh, prepare your presentations. Me, I am convinced that right. you, are, you are doing very useful things, but right. I need cabinet. Mm -hmm. We're invited to State House. And we made the presentation to the core members of the cabinet, the line ministers and so forth. Mm. And out of that presentation, a decision was taken that we should be supported in our endeavor. And uh, we worked on that scheme for about, shall we say, nearly three, three years, mm -hmm. up to October 2011. Uh, when we invited the president to come and see where the 450 million he had given us when he unveiled that lime green vehicle which people have characterized with all kinds of adjectives and so forth mm -hmm. using, eh? for example uh, that there's an iron frog <laughs> <laughs> meaning white elephant yeah white elephant and, and so forth uh, on that day of unveiling mm. he said africa is going through renaissance that was part of his uh, speech. Mm. And uh, he's going to ensure that the government supports uh, our endeavors. Recently, you must have read about us going to Kenya, yes. Nairobi, uh, to show what we have done since the proof of concept vehicle. Because mm -hmm. okay. we have now, if like, updated, improved it to a hybrid version. Yes, uh, the one that uses electricity electric and, and gasoline uh, or gas petrol. Gasoline as well. Mm. Um, because of that large amount of money that is required, we are saying that whereas government has come in with the initial funding, I think the private sector people mm. you know, should at an appropriate moment mm -hmm. come in. What sort of reaction did you uh, get or receive from Kenya, from the Kenyan capital Nairobi? The, the reception was very, very, you know, very positive. Very positive. Yes. You, you talk about uh, a hybrid uh, using uh, electricity and uh, petrol or gasoline. Why do you have to do that, uh, okay. especially given that Uganda is on the verge of becoming one of the major oil producers? This thing we call the hybrid vehicles, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. That in areas like cities, it will be preferable for you to run this car mm -hmm. in an electric mode. Mm -hmm. When you're on the outskirt, either you can then switch into the gasoline regime, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And it takes you to my village, you know, Arua. Yes. <laughs> There's no conflict here. I see. Okay. I see. Besides, you know, using that gasoline to fill the cars right you can actually even do a better thing and they use that to generate electricity right right and that electricity will not be purely for cars only right but even the other operations in. when you look at uganda it is fundamentally an agricultural or agro society and that perhaps uh, when you look at your priorities that maybe you should have thought about something else you should have thought about a tractor or something along those lines. How do you respond to that? Because someone might come up and say, you know what, this is a prestigious type of project. I've been asked this question probably five or four more times. Okay. And uh, the last time I was asked this, I snapped. If you look at tractors, mm. you know the size of our land and the expanses of this land where you can mechanize and so forth. Mm. At the end of the day, Will you be able to market these these tractors 
beyond Uganda. Mm -hmm. With the car, it's much easier. Mm -hmm. okay? As long as your engineering is good, your pricing is good, mm -hmm. the incentives, mm -hmm. the cars you make in Uganda, you can easily sell them also across. There's this company, uh, Ashok Leyland, mm -hmm. which is uh, an Indian company, right. which is in that area of trucks, right. buses, and so forth, right. has approached the government of Uganda mm -hmm. uh, to do a joint venture. Okay. Yeah. And the government has identified Kira Motors Corporation, uh -huh. which is the name under which we operate as a partner. Mm to team up with it. Do you think when you look at uh, some of the things that you have been able to accomplish so far, mm. that you are perhaps uh, a great example mm. of the saying that uh, as we live in this world today, mm. the intellectual balance of power mm -hmm. has been shifting mm. in our favor? I fully concur with that. In fact, if you observe now, Whereas over the last maybe 30 years, 20 years, mm -hmm. a lot of things shifted from, say, U.S. Yes. to China, mm -hmm. primarily because labor mm -hmm. was cheap mm -hmm. after those kids had acquired the necessary skills. So they have to outsource. They, they outsource. Mm -hmm. yeah. Soon what's going to happen is when the cost of labor in China moves up, right. okay, the next port of call will be probably us. That was Professor Tkodele Togboa of Makere University in Uganda, the creators of the Chira EV Smack, a hybrid vehicle which is expected to start commercial production by 2018. Now we'll pause for a short break and would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now on the social networking website Twitter and we are tweeting live. Follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka. And join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOA Tech Africa. And we are still on Facebook. Just enter the keywords Straight Talk Africa. Become a fan and connect with other friends of the Voice of America. We'll be right back with you. So please don't go away. The Vehicle Design Project is an innovative research project aimed at applying contemporary technologies to develop sustainable transportation solutions for Uganda and Africa. The project was inspired by the Vehicle Design Summit, an international student-led consortium aimed at leapfrogging sustainable transportation technologies. In 2008, VDS teams from 35 preeminent research universities built a five-seat plug-in hybrid electric vehicle called the Vision 200. Makerere University, the only African team, developed the powertrain and in-vehicle communication network for the Vision 200. The Ugandan Investment Authority has commissioned two companies, Kira Motors Corporation and China Engineering Limited, to start commercial production by 2018. Sia Niyama Karoma, the First Lady of Sierra Leone, speaks to VOA on the Ebola crisis. I would want the people in West Africa to know that Ebola is real. Ebola kills. Early detection and prompt treatment can save lives. And I'm asking our people not to victimize or stigmatize survivors. Ebola is a challenge, but together we'll all be able to overcome it. That was Sia Niyama Karoma, the First Lady of Sierra Leone, speaking to VOA Africa on the Ebola crisis. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111, U.S. Country Code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question, keep your comment brief, and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, Esther Gizui, and welcome back. Today we are talking about the current status of African startups and accelerators 
and how they attract technology experts and major corporations. Our distinguished guests again are Shinedu Enekwe, co-founder and executive director of TipHub Africa, a business accelerator and consultancy that supports seed stage tech and social impact ventures in Africa and the African diaspora. Samuel Sulafer, founder and executive director of Mansa Collabs, an advisory group for scalable startups, expanding private companies, and established social enterprises across the African continent and diaspora. Well, welcome again. Thank you. Thank you. It's yes, good. you had, of course, uh, the opportunity to watch uh, uh, the interview with the professor from Makere in Uganda. Yes. Your reaction? I think it's a great thing to see Africans actually taking up the mantle of design and technology innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that they're uh, thinking about things beyond the, the design, where we talk about the innovation of the distribution models and mm -hmm. um, definitely thinking about the production of the inputs that go into the car, the steel, the, uh, the actual batteries, which may lead to a stronger piece of innovation if they're able to do that. So I think it's good what they're doing, and I hope that their vision uh, is a lot longer than uh, what it seems at now. Great effort, huh? What about you, uh, Samuel, your reaction to this? You think that uh, their priorities are in place, or perhaps they should have ventured elsewhere? Uh, I agree. I mean, uh, in terms of what, what Chinadu was saying, and, and think that it's an exciting uh, next step, really, uh, for innovation, and to see that they were able to actually produce uh, a running concept. You know, the, the benefit of having produced that version one is that they may, as you saw in the, uh, in the piece, that they've now moved into buses and trucks. Mm -hmm. So you create more opportunities for yourself in the trying to address one, one market uh, and possibly identifying new and other markets with, with that, which I think is always good. Very interesting. Now, Shinedu, what exactly do you do, really, <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, having direct benefits to, for example, people in your native land, mm -hmm. the great nation of Nigeria? Uh, what we do really is um, we provide catalytic capital. So not just funding, we provide mentoring relationships, we provide uh, first customer relationships and business partners. So for example, uh, when we meet a startup, we select whether we're going to work with them, we evaluate what their chances are to be a high growth, high impact uh, organization, mm -hmm. their management team, we look at the actual technology and the product and then what we do is we look at our resources, whether it's uh, personal relationships with different mentors mm -hmm. that can add value to the organization. We look to on-the-ground partners. We have on-the-ground partners in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, Renovation Hub is one of them in their uh, incubation space, and we'll either refer them to the incubation space, see if they have any um, relationships that can be of value, help them with incorporation, help them with... Uh, business model design. So it's, it's like a lab that happens once we decide to work with an organization. Mm -hmm. We look to ways to add value to that relationship. How does, how does one qualify? What are the eligibility requirements? Well, like I said, it's about high growth and high impact. So what we do is we have this uh, kind of process of evaluating a company. We do a, an interview a phone interview usually, or we do an in-person interview of the startup, but then we kind of do our due diligence mm -hmm. of understanding the industry, the sector, the country that they operate. And then what we do secondarily is to have another interview where we bring in a mentor or a subject matter expert mm -hmm. that will give us more insight as to whether the founding team is strong enough to support their business idea. And then after that, we make a decision based on those two interviews our existing relationships, whether we want to start working with that organization. Do you have deep pockets? Do we, <laughs> uh, one of my mentors always told me, it's not about how deep your pockets are, but how deep the pockets are the people around you. So we make sure that we have strong relationship with different corporations, different uh, funders and funding institutions and development finance institutions to make sure that our pockets are not as deep as you know, those that may be in Silicon Valley, but the relationships may be deeper. I see. So that's what we offer as value. 
Samuel, what about you? Yeah. What exactly do you do? So, yeah, Monster Collabs was really born from uh, my own experience as well as through uh, my career, seeing that uh, early stage companies, small businesses, really have a hard time uh, finding accessible, trusted uh, advisors uh, mm -hmm. to help them at that very early stage uh, when they're a asking a lot of questions, going through the growing pains that are normal for any company throughout the world. Um, and seeing sort of the, the rapid growth that's taking place in a lot of the key markets all across the continent mm -hmm. and amongst the diaspora, uh, you know, we set out to really be able to provide that type of support, accessible advisory support to those types of companies, really leveraging primarily a virtual advisory model, um, but essentially being able to connect with the learning needs of that early stage company, matching them up with someone who can support them, and really focusing in on that. Um, we also provide support really at, at, in what we do also together here in, in, the, in the region is around the ecosystem building. And, and Tip Hub does a lot in that, so does Monster Collabs and a few other firms. And that's really trying to excite um, what I would call sort of the serendipitous effect mm -hmm. uh, that's required really to see some good breakout companies. And that's trying to sow the environment that's conducive uh, in this area and hopefully um, on the continent at some point as well through partnerships uh, to, to identify source and then, and then support. And who do you specifically target? Yeah, so we're looking at folks anywhere from idea stage to that early stage they've started. Um, and we look at the tech and creative sectors because that's where a lot of the uh, experiences of, of, of our team. Um, but then really eventually we hope to go to adjoining sectors as well, such as agribusiness um, and, and, and possibly sort of where agribusiness and health cross with IT, as you know, Tech is sort of going cross-sectoral, so there's a lot of opportunities in those areas as well. You obviously seem to be talking about uh, the traditional type of, uh, you know, a startup, you know, type of people that mm -hmm. uh, have some certain level of education, uh, certain knowledge and what have you. Uh, but what about the untraditional types of uh, startups? For example, I'm sure you have heard about... Uh, 19-year-old mm -hmm. uh, Kelvin Doe mm -hmm. of Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. a guy who sometimes goes by the name DJ Focus, mm -hmm. especially when he's playing music on his own radio, exactly. which he really made out of scrap. Exactly. Exactly. I, honestly, I think we want to aim for all the types of entrepreneurs, not, not so much those that uh, fit a certain um, characteristic or, or shape, and, and largely because that's kind of the problem that we have in the innovation pipeline is that it's not as inclusive and as broad based as it needs to be to capture folks like uh, Cal Kelvin, um, Kelvin and Doe, Doe yes. and, and others like him uh, that are just you know, naturally gifted and have something to contribute. Very interesting. Well, you're tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of a discussion in a moment. But first here is Maria Majero. Take it away, Mariama. Well, thanks, Shaka. Still to come, we'll reveal some of the fantastic feedback we've received from our audience through social media. But now, here is our letter of the week from a Straight Talk Africa Facebook fan who responded to our question of the week. Kelvin Malunga in Blantyre, Malawi writes, New entrepreneurs need training in business management. Experienced entrepreneurs should help train the beginners. To be frank, African projects need to have the best business trainers. We are not using our best people to train our young businessmen. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. Call us now with your questions and comments. The number 202-619-3111. And the U.S. country code is 1. Call direct and we'll call you right back. Remember to keep your questions brief. 
Now back to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizui, and welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, live from Washington. Once again, it's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Mariama. Take it away again, Mariama. Well, thanks, Shaka. Struggles are typical for startups in Africa as the continent slowly rises to the opportunities of technology. In some countries, a startup with a smart idea might expect to attract investor interest. However, some analysts say that in Africa, business leaders and investors are often held back by low internet penetration, lack of early stage capital, and management expertise. Well, this leads us to our question of the week asking, what type of infrastructure and support are needed to better promote startups or first-time entrepreneurs in Africa? Well, thanks everyone for using all our social media platform to communicate to us. Let's begin with a comment from Mohamed Ahmed Mansour from Monrovia in Liberia, who writes, I think startups or first-time entrepreneurs in Africa need to have the willingness and the ability to do business in Africa. Loans are very important. The government should provide loans and encourage entrepreneurs to plan the nature of their business. Well, another reminder that we are tweeting live today. Use the hashtag VOA Tech Africa. And if you haven't yet, please follow us at VOA Shaka. Let's go to a tweet from Emeka Ulor, who writes, Startups really need state-of-the-art gadgets, free internet, power supply, and takeoff capital. Well, a lot of talks about money. Um, Shaka, and guess what do you make of these comments? Thank you very much. Uh, what about that, uh, Shinedu? Um, when we talk about capital, I think capital uh, first, when you, the equity that people would invest inside of a company, I don't think that's the first issue. The first issue is making sure that when you put the money in, that there will be an effective use of those resources. So I, a lot of that, to make sure that happens, in, involves actual uh, some business advisory, some advice, people that have been through the situation before. So a lot of that has to do with mentors and then success, examples of success that have happened in the future. It happened prior. So um, what I think is if you look at other ecosystems that are working or have worked, hmm. a lot of it comes from when organizations have grown or built up, been grown to the successful s status, those employees that have seen an organization grow now leave that organization with that knowledge and they build up their own organization and they attract funding from people who grew rich from those organizations. So it, it takes more success stories of startups, of things like Safari Common and Pesa, and those people willing to invest in, you know, startups. So that, success breeds success? Exactly. I see. Mariama, do you have any more feedback to share with us, please? Absolutely. We'll move on to a posting from Okubo Omunua Igodawa from Abuja in Nigeria, one of your Nigerian brothers uh, here, uh, writing that African families and societies should make it their business to nurture and develop the talents of the people. It's our duty to help startups build confidence while encouraging them to put their ideas into practice. We should encourage startups to embrace the risk of loss because it is an inevitable part of running a business and business loans should be provided at interest rates that will not abort success. I like that uh, very particularly. And uh, African governments should also prioritize building up its infrastructure. A lot of uh, things to think about while we add it. Let's look at another comment, this time from Arthur uh, Jeremiah, who says, the challenges facing entrepreneurs or startups in Africa are varied. A weak economic infrastructure and a lack of financial support are two reasons. Startup uh, companies will help establish a good foundation for small business growth and youth should also be encouraged and trained to be entrepreneurs and not only job seekers. Your take on those ones, guys. Well, what about that, uh, Samuel? So uh, of the two points, uh, I think the, the family support is definitely one that is critical for any entrepreneur. Uh, they call it sort of both from the access to capital and, and as well as sort of the 
uh, emotional, psychological support, I would say. So they call the Friends, Family, and Fools as their first source of capital as well. But I think beyond that, uh, mm. allowing uh, the person, the young person specifically, to know that they have space to try and, and fail is a big help at the early stage for most entrepreneurs um, and giving them that, that sort of fertile ground to do that um, moving forward. So I think that's a key, key element. Uh, from the loan side of it in, in accessing uh, interest, low interest loans, I think it depends what type of company. Uh, for startup companies, I think one of the interesting areas now is to see how can governments incentivize, let's say, carriers or so to develop funds to invest in these uh, startup firms from the technology aspect. So I think different ways of looking at that. What about some people who actually say, wait a minute, what is really needed, first and foremost, is an idea. Sure. And then people. Sure. And then capital in that order. I think that that's very true. The ideas are, are definitely needed. But if you, you, as you know, in Africa, ideas are, are plentiful. It's not the fact that there isn't ideas. It's the fact that do you have the experience to actually execute that idea? Do you have the relationships that'll help that idea not just be uh, you know, a pilot phase, but actually a, a long-term business? Market, yeah. is there a need, for example? Yeah, is there a real need? And do you serve that need at the right time? Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the things I would like to address is the infrastructure. We'll get that, to that yeah. later. Thanks, Mariama, for bringing us this week's audience reaction. Well, that will do it for today's social uh, media segment. Uh, just a reminder that we appreciate all the feedback, whether it's in social media form or using other means to communicate to us. Please, please keep them coming. And if you are a new fan, just drop us a line at africatv at voanews.com. Once again, our email address is africatv at voanews.com. Or post your comment on our Facebook page. Just enter the keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Be sure to visit us online at voaafrica.com or you can join our YouTube channel. Just look us up at VOA TV to Africa. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. Now let's take a look at what's on tap for next week's program. Next week on Straight Talk Africa, Burundian President Pierre Nkurunziza is bidding for a third term in the country's June elections. We'll discuss why the move is stirring controversy. That's next week, right here on Straight Talk Africa. Welcome back, and today we are talking about African startups and accelerators and how they attract technology experts and major corporations. Our distinguished guests are Chinedu Enekwe, co-founder and executive director of Tip Hub Africa, and Samuel Sulafer, founder and executive director of Mansa Collabs. Well, I have to say, Chinedu and Samuel, that once again I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled Thank you. to have the opportunity to host you on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you. Same goes. Yeah, same goes for us. You're most welcome. Now, let's go back to uh, what we were talking about uh, earlier. I, I know that, uh, Chinedu, you in particular, you attended a recent very, very important uh, conference, uh, Impact Investor Conference in the Kenyan capital Nairobi? Yes. On February 7th? Yes, exactly. How important was that conference? It was very important. It uh, represents uh, this collaboration of South-South in uh, social enterprise collaboration. Uh, IntelliCap organized the SoundCalp Forum. Mm -hmm. This is their second year organizing it. And it brought together um, Safaricom CEO uh, all the way down to the Impact Hub Africa C programs coordinator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a real convenient event that also brought together uh, startups in Africa, all around Africa, to discuss the way forward of how to channel impact investor dollars into uh, sustainable enterprises and startups, mm -hmm. most especially, and then how to translate that, the knowledge that is in India, which has a very thriving and a more mature um, venture capital market for s technology firms and social enterprises, and translate that knowledge into 
uh, East Africa at this moment, but a Africa as a whole. Mm. When you say uh, South, South, what exactly do you mean? Because there are a lot of people who may not quite understand that, especially those who are not in academics, really. Okay. Um, south, South, you know. What, what, I, what I mean by that is, uh, I guess, developing countries tra transferring knowledge between themselves mm -hmm. and kind of championing their own causes and leading them uh, by, not by themselves, but leading them from the front. I you see. Know? So as opposed to being led by development institutions, they are kind of coming together and figuring out ways that they can collaborate and success. I see. Well, I guess that uh, we have to go to the lifeline of the show, which are the telephone callers. And we do have uh, uh, Tafa from the Republic of Ghana. Good evening, Tafa. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Hello, Shaka. Good evening. How are you doing? Usually terrific. How are you? How have you been? Uh, I'm around, Shaka. <laughs> what is your question, Tafa? Shaka, my uh, form of uh, not question, let's see. My, 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 my advice is that, Shaka, if you look at the whole continent of Africa, we have a very good fertile land. But there's no capital injection to help youth to go into agriculture sector. Every, every, every youth in Africa, they are interested in what they are seeing in, in West. For instance, you see a, a farmer in America or Europe, very, very successful. But when it comes to Africa, because we don't have a machinery, they also do the same thing. Then it becomes very problem for, for every youth in Africa. When you talk about agriculture, agriculture sector, no youth want to go in that sector. Everybody wants to do either policy or other things. Thank you. Thank you, Tafa. I think, uh, Tafa, frankly, your point is well made. Uh, let's go to Nigeria. Good evening, Patrick. Uh, you're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Good evening, Mr. Shaka. Good evening, our guest. I am usually terrific. What is your question, Patrick? Yeah, my question goes to Mr. Chinedu and the uh, Mr. Chinedu, I want to find out from you. You see, in Africa, let's say Nigeria, we have uh, different departments in our technological universities. And at the end of the day, they say our graduates, they finish graduating, they don't have a job, they don't know how to start a business. Now, with the start up innovative theory technology you have right now. How do our universities benefit so that our graduates, when they graduate, they'll have that knowledge of startup not coming to depend on the government or their parents. They'll be entrepreneur inclined. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good question. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I think one of the things that I would like to start off by saying is that Students need to get experience before that they, not that they have to have experience before they start a business, but most businesses that are successful are led by experienced managers. Mm -hmm. So I would say first seek that type of experience, but like he says, it's difficult to get jobs in coming out of uh, school. Mm -hmm. There are different programs that come up, that are coming up. I know of several that are looking for internship programs where that give uh, graduates or while they're in school students internship experience where mm -hmm. they can have real experience inside of organizations. And then I would venture to say that students can do self-study, learn on their own how to build uh, technology mm -hmm. on their own, self-study, and use that kind of drive and determination to uh, interview for jobs. I think there's a lot of jobs out there for those who actually take it upon themselves to learn different techniques on YouTube or mm -hmm. whatever medium, and then apply them. I see. Let's go to East Africa. Good evening, Dennis from Uganda. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Good evening, Saka. How are you? You're just terrific. How are you today? Mm, today, I am okay. What is your question, Dennis? Yeah, I just want to share my comment with the, my, my fellow callers from Nigeria and Ghana. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are fundamental factors that normally affect our technological development. And one biggest fundamental factor is our educational system. Mm -hmm. Saka, you understand the educational system that were left by colonialism, in, more especially in Uganda. Mm -hmm. 
in order for a student to develop and become a technologist, you must undergo, you must start studying from from either pre-primary, primary, you go to you go to all level, you go to HSC, that is when you can now specialize. But the Western style of style of, 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 of education, a child decides and an, an assessment is always done for a particular child on whichever area a child is more confident, most most comfortable and most most co co conversant and a child pursues that particular direction. And you realize that this one takes us a little, a little some time before the child specializes on the area of, uh, of, of, of advancement and technology that the child can take on. I see. Well? So I want to profoundly, I want to profoundly blame our system of education if we could revisit and review the policy, how the system of education in most of the, the developing countries, more especially Uganda. I feel we could even move a little faster than we are doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, time happens not to be our best ally, Dennis. A reminder that you are tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. If you wish to participate in our discussion, please call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code is 1. We'll continue our discussion in a moment, so please don't go away. The African Diaspora Tech Companies support startups and small business enterprise. Among the areas Accelerator Tip Hub and Advisory Group Mansa Collabs provided support are brand building, business training, lectures and panels, provide seed funding, strategic mentorship with a large network of partner entities, mentors and investors, entrepreneurship focused business training, access to partnerships with other leading organizations, attendance to in-country workshops and events, and access to new regional and global markets. We are able to touch on things that are important to people on an everyday basis. We hope that our viewers are getting inspired when they watch our show. They're getting a view of the world from a different perspective, things that perhaps are not in their immediate vicinity. Today, I could put in on the show something that is a little different, a little unique, and this gives me that uh, you know, inspiration to come to work. If you like today's show, please write and tell us what you think or give us some suggestions. Be sure to tell us what station you're tuned into. Our address, Straight Talk Africa, Voice of America, 330 Independence Avenue, Southwest, Washington, D.C., 20237, USA. Or send us an email at africatv at voanews.com. Log on to our website at voaafrica.com. Or post your comments on Facebook, keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizui, and of course, this is Street Talk Africa live from Washington. Let me come to you uh, somewhere. It's not that uh, we forgot about you. Mm -hmm. uh, you just listened to a caller from Uganda sure. and a caller from Ghana. I think uh, they both raise a very interesting point, uh, especially about education. Sure. Uh, when we talk about education, uh, we do have schools, for example, of technology. Sure. Um, the University of Nairobi, for example, frankly, has a very long history of teaching sure. engineers. Sure. But how come these engineers don't deliver anything? You keep hearing that uh, Kenya is going to build roads. These roads are going to be built by Chinese, mm -hmm. the railway, they are going to be built by Americans, Europeans, but not Kenyans. In Uganda, it's the same thing, and I'm sure in Ethiopia, it's the same thing. Uh, what do they need in order to be real engineers? Not simply armchair, engineers really well um i think that's a that's a big uh big in terms of the, the sort of the description of it but what i see happening a lot is the like jobs there's a sort of a, a, a labor market um disconnect mm -hmm. uh, and i can say that also for new ventures uh in terms of our businesses that are getting started i'm, I'm pretty sure that at each of those universities there are hundreds if not thousands of folks that are finding the, the challenges of, of getting a job and deciding to start their own business to make use of the skills that they've gained, but are they in the pipeline for the deals and, and the contracts that are, are upcoming? I think that's 
that's where um, the, the question is and the, really where the support is needed to make them ready. In a lot of cases, like for instance, for the, for the folks that we've worked with, we've noticed that, for instance, when you have an engineer or a software IT strong team, maybe the challenge is more on the marketing and branding side, communicating mm -hmm. and pitching uh, their value. Because the skills are there, the, the, really the innovation is there, but it's about making it attractive to a client or to an investor to get them to that next stage to you know, apply their skills that they've, that they've done. Um, related to the comment for, uh, from the gentleman from both Ghana and Uganda, that is really around sort of the pipeline, uh, both in terms of basic skills and, and exposure. Uh, but I also think that you know, sometimes we, we get fixated on we, which we need within the in-school experience, but there's so much we can also do out of school in providing avenues, which you'll find even in more developed markets, that can help take the sort of natural interest and strength of, of some folks that are there mm -hmm. and help them sort of build on that uh, and, and really take on uh, the new challenges. Internships, you know, those types of things? They're, yes, those labs, uh, different ways of doing that. Where are conditions best really suited for a young African to see his or her creative endeavor and dream become a reality and flourish? From your experience, really, on the continent so far. You mean where are the, which sectors? Yeah, well, where, like a, a country. Oh, which country? Like a, yeah. Oh, in terms of countries, so each, you know, in, in, in working in this field, you'll you start to see nuances in, in different regions, different countries. I'm very excited about the innovation that's going to come out of Nigeria because of the various sort of components that are there, both, you know, talent, mm. the market, mm. uh, the access to, to, to telecom, uh, yeah, but also other countries uh, such as hopefully uh, in East Africa, you'll see more and more coming out of Kenya, Uganda as well. Mentioning Nigeria is very interesting precisely because Nigeria is not short of human resources or natural resources. What it probably is short of, frankly, is the appropriate leadership to show the direction. Isn't it important, for example, frankly, to have a leadership that provides an enabling environment beyond simply talking the talk, but actually walking the talk? I, I, I agree, but I would, I would say that there's a, there's a limit to what uh, government can actually do. Um, there's some structural issues with economies that I wouldn't necessarily say that governments can try to diversify the economy, but they're not the actors in the economy. The people are. Um, but they can come with the policies that are supportive. And they do. Like, say, for example, Nigeria, there's the UN policy, which has hundreds of startups, hundreds of entrepreneurs that are funded mm -hmm. uh, with grant funding from the government. There are, there are programs, and I'm not going to say that those programs are 100% are perfect mm -hmm. or that they are a panacea, but what I, what I believe, and they also have a funding, uh, an actual equity fund that invests in startups. So there's, there's a lot of political will in certain categories, but in, when we speak of Nigeria and the political will to to make Nigeria accessible. It's, I think there's a lot of issues that would help startups more along the lines of, if I wanted my first customer to be a, uh, a telecoms operator, mm. how do I get there? If I don't have the networks of knowing someone, yeah. how do I get to know the person inside uh, MTN that makes a decision? I, understand. I think those are the difficulties. But you need also a society that uh, uh, is in a position, for example, uh, to be predictable when elections are supposed to take place, yes. to provide security. Yes. Without those types of things, I don't think you can do much. Um, when you look at the uh, private sector, are you aware of, uh, for example, uh, the Tony Erumeru Foundation? Yes, I am. And it's relevant to some of the things we are talking about. Very much so. They have a, a groundbreaking initiative, which is a $100 million dollar a uh, 10-year program for the Tony Alumilu Entrepreneurship Program, which mm -hmm. is TEEP. And uh, they are, have an ongoing application right now, which is seeking to, uh, I guess, engage about 1,000 uh, entrepreneurs across the continent. 
And it's a great program. And it's a perfect example of, you know, the people inside the economy, the private actors, the people who have made tons of money to look back into the economy and say, how can I make more? And looking at the people as a resource, looking at entrepreneurs, looking at um, young people as the engine of what will lead Africa forward. So I think that's a perfect example of, of the private sector working to change the outlook on Africa. He's a great man. It looks like uh, Nigeria or even Africa needs like 10 Tony Elmeros. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Let's go to the lifeline of the show again. We have Mohammed from Nigeria. Good evening, Mohammed. You're most welcome. Straight Talk Africa. You have a minute. Mohammed, are you there? Well, it looks like uh, uh, we can't access Mohammed. Uh, wh what about you, uh, um, somewhere in terms of your experience? I realize you did something about something in Tanzania. Sure. Uh, so I was in Tanzania in sort of two phases of my career. Most recently, I was working with an, an international youth organization there, uh, managing e-learning projects, uh, mo sort of delivering digital content through mobile phones. Mm -hmm. Later on, uh, working with a project that delivered digital content for teacher training. Uh, prior to that, I also had an opportunity to sort of work uh, in telecom infrastructure and kind of see from the ground floor uh, some of the expansion that was taking shape in the telecom industry. What would you say is the single most important quality uh, that someone, frankly, who is going to be a successful entrepreneur needs? Passion? Uh, I think you put, put the, was it nail on the head or head, you know, but essentially, yes, passion. And, and the reason why I say passion is, one, you need passion to find and solve a problem. Ideas come from trying to solve problems. Innovation comes from trying to solve problems. And then you also need passion to persevere because you mentioned some of the challenge. There are thousands more challenges that entrepreneurs face on a daily basis. And really, sometimes the defining character or, or, or aspect from a successful and an unsuccessful entrepreneur is that the first uh, persevered and continued on to, to work on what they were uh, trying to solve. What are some of the problems that uh, you have encountered uh, in your efforts, efforts to deliver on what you, what you want to deliver, really? And how have you been able to overcome that? Well, so I think we're in a very interesting time now. Um, I've had the fortune of actually meeting uh, Chinadu and his team a year ago uh, to, to really look at these different issues around ecosystem building, uh, providing support. And you see that, and we're actually just, you know, the latest wave. There have been various waves before us that have tried to promote technology uh, and technology entrepreneurship. So we're not the first, we're not the last. But what we're seeing is that now you finally get, you're seeing momentum around uh, the, the conversation hmm. as well as the support mechanisms. And so what, one of the challenges that we found sometime was connecting with our peers. Uh, and now we're finding that that's more present for us. You have 10 seconds. Yeah. Who inspired you or what inspired you to do what you're doing, really? I think the inspiration for me has to be uh, just entrepreneurship, and that came from family. Uh, so. What about you, Chinedu? Uh, everyone on the streets of Nigeria, all the entrepreneurs that I see working tirelessly. Okay, we have to go. On that note, thanks to our distinguished guest, Chinedu Enelkwe, co-founder and executive director of Tip Hub Africa, Samuel Sulafel, founder and executive director of Mansa Collabs. Thanks to our feared stations, along with our viewers and listeners, we thank you for tuning in. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next. And tomorrow morning, Today Break Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning in to Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not bitter, Africa. And please remember to keep the African hopes alive.